What if you just simply stopped and asked your client, Ms. Jones, now there's a couple different options we have for you. Now, I can show you basically anything you want, and we're all going gonna to protect your family, but would you, you're looking for the best plan for your family, or are you looking for the cheapest price? What do you think they're going to say? Best plan. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then at that moment, when you show them the different options, and if they don't know the difference, if they're not taught or educated on the difference between the plan, the only thing they can see is price. Of course, they're going to pick the lowest price. Mm. So it's up to you as the agent to be able to provide that value, understand it yourself, and then provide it to them. And it's really good to recommend what you would do for your family. They're trusting you in that process. Hey guys, welcome back to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. I'm here with hard hitting Roger Short. Boom, 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 boom. And, and Zach. Is that, is that what they do? Yeah, when they go to like... Hey man, on the last podcast, we talked about how much we missed you. Maybe you started to me? take all that back. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you guys are sweethearts. We missed you on one of these. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? When yeah. one of us isn't here, the dynamics off. It is just a little bit. Yeah, it's like trying to ride a tricycle with. One of the one of the wheels missing. You can only lean in one direction. You know, the other direction, yeah. and you're going over. Yeah, we call those bicycles. Well, I'm talking about training wheels. <laughs> training wheels, not yeah. what I say. Tricycle. Yeah, I meant training wheels. You know, like when you're kid. Yeah, you take one training wheel off, and they can oh, only yeah, lean one of, direction. They can't lean the other way. They have those that, cool. That's new. the picture I had in my brain. Is Ava using those cool bikes without the pedals? Yeah, like a glider bike. Thing. Yeah, those are cool, man. You, I want a, I want a one? grown up version of that. That'd be kind of sick. You I know can what see I'm talking you about? Cruising down your street. Have you seen those? No. Well, we probably lost half our listeners, but we're here for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we just got, we got caught up in some friendly conversation. Anyway, <laughs> so we want to bring you value today. We want to bring you value. Not this jibber jabber that <laughs> no, we were, we're just cutting, doing. We're cutting the jibber jabber. Yeah. Um, we do want to bring you value, and we're having a conversation that hopefully, no, certainly, if you put into practice, will help you sell more. And not only sell more, but it will also help you build your business. Yes. And it will also help you retain your agents if you are building a business. Is that fair to say? What would you say? Grow a thriving business. Grow a thriving yeah. business. Yep. yep. Grow your bit. sales and grow a thriving company. It might, you might actually keep more than, you, than, than sell more. And, and, and what okay. I mean by that okay. is, like, there's so many techniques and there's so many ways to actually sell things based upon price or based upon the home or even your leadership. But the trick is, is keeping it. Yeah. And when you, when you not allow, no one spill into what we're going to talk about, yeah. but when you don't allow your cl client to have buyer remorse mm -hmm. or your agent that you recruited on to feel like they had the smoke screen, <laughs> yeah. then, then they don't have the reason to want to cancel the policy or look at another opportunity. That's that's good, and that's a good intro to this. So, so what we're talking about here is uh, the importance of value. That's really what we're we're communicating, and we'll we'll start off. Um, it, Zach, I, I know you you are uh, super uh, in tune with this in regards to like pricing and value. But before I jump to you, let's do this. Roger, you have a saying. You have a saying. <laughs> he, I know. he took it back. I want to come you, back man. to you, but you <laughs> have a saying. It. He took it back. Well, well, he's throwing it to This me. is an important thing that they need to write down. If you're driving, pull over, all that stuff. Your statement about value, what is it? Where there is no value, there is no price low enough. Boom. That's the podcast. That's it. We'll see you guys. No, <laughs> but that's very true. Yeah. So this podcast is about value-based selling and value-based leadership. Yeah. Versus what? Price-based selling. Price-based selling and the smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sm it's smoke screen show. <laughs> Call it. Yeah. That's different than the smoke show, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The smoke yeah. screen show. The smoke screen but it, show. Yeah, I wouldn't even count would it say leadership. You're a smoke show. <laughs> well, I, I get that. You know, I get that. It's in the comments for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put in the comments if you think Chris is a smoke show. Sometimes I need that guy. Chris, the smoke I need, show. Let, I really need that. Can you? Can you? Can you give him some affirmation? <laughs> can we, some come on, it, uh, we can't get his head any bigger. He oh, won't geez. fit in the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. So smoke screen show. There's a callback, isn't that Zach? <laughs> uh, he doesn't know what we're talking about. I haven't heard it yet. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Well, I'm saying that you can't really say it's like a, a smokescreen show for leadership because it's really a, a positional fake leadership because it truly wouldn't be leadership on that side if there was no value in that relationship or leading your people below you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Why don't we start with the pricing? Let's start there. Value-based selling. Mm. Value-based selling. Boom. Why? Why is that Let's important? start there. Why is it important to, to sell on value versus selling on price? Because nobody wants to be a salesman, Roger. Nobody does. I hate salesmen. They're slimy. They're 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 always trying to get over I'm on you. <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm a little hurt. But, uh, Matter of fact, guys, I dare you to go to lunch with Roger and not try to eat a, eat something. I that, dare you to try to order your you. own food. <laughs> 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 You'll have four appetizers. It'll be a great meal. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and guess what? It's Everybody so always eats all the appetizers. <laughs> they do. Don't they? they do. People yes. love going to lunch with me and yeah. dinner. I, I try new foods. Order all the I appetizers. I try new stuff. People are like, oh, I didn't realize we were getting all these apps. Oh, that's good. I would have never I was like, tried man, that. This guy was born to sell. Holy cow! Boom. Yeah, for sure. But like it, in a situation, you know, the idea of the salesman uh, or being a salesman, or if you're moved to this business, um, you kind of don't really want to be. It feels like you would be judged. You would be categorized somebody you don't want to be. You feel like you're disingenuous. You feel like you're manipulative, manipulative, um, controlling, or yeah. just pushy, or right. evil, or mean. And what was that? Uh, ugh was a word? Is yeah. that right? I did a whole talk on yeah. it at, yeah. at mm-hmm. one of our most recent conferences. Yeah. Yeah. Ab- yeah. And I wonder if that's even on our Life Insurance Academy. It's, it's on our YouTube channel. You yes. do, yeah. So mm-hmm. that, that's a very good one. But, yeah. but that's the whole idea behind that. And if you really want to be a difference maker and go into the home, the only way you can really bring a difference is you're not trying to sell them something they don't need. You're not trying to position a product for you to get a commission. And in life insurance, particularly in final expense, which is more of an emotional sell, like the last thing I want to do ever is to feel like they've bought something that they don't want or they don't need or that they were tricked at all into getting. And the way you get around that is by building value and revealing the vulnerabilities and the need that has already exist in that home, whether they knew it or not. And you as the trained professional are able to reveal that to them um, in a way, but show them how valuable this service is to providing peace of mind for their family, mm-hmm. which is everything. And I tell you, I've, I've ridden with people. I've ridden with a ton of people. We all have. <laughs> you have ridden with people? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, uh, there you go, bud. There's, wow. there's not wow. much anymore that really raises my eyebrows when I go into the home, but every now and then it does. Um, but I've, I mean, the couple comments that people make, like, you know, how much do you want? Or how much coverage you want? Well, co- how much coverage you want? Or uh, like, like they don't know, right? Um, <laughs> and, but different. <laughs> how com- much coverage you want? Comments like that. Or you go through an entire thing and there's no questions about care or being genuine or finding out what the true need is. Literally, it's so drastically different that an agent can get a policy in two different ways, but they're going through the whole time and their only goal is to sell $10,000 final expense policy. Like it came out of a cookie cutter box and there's only two options. You're buying this plan or that plan. And literally they just try to sell that plan and there's no rhyme. There's no reason. There's no value. There's no emotion. And typically a lot of that times when a client uh, feels that way, they they're going to get a little buyer's remorse and you're going to get that forbidden phone call the next day. Here's the bronze. Here's the silver. Here's the gold. Which one? (laughs) Which one do you want? Price, price, price. You know, it's price. I I do want to brag about us a little bit on life insurance Academy. Make us feel good. Okay. Uh, Make us feel good. Our, our stuff is really principle based. I think that's why people tune in, you know, what stuff, our, our products, our services, the, the sales stuff that we talk about, stuff, our stuffy, content. stuffy stuff. Our <laughs> good. Content. Our goods, yes, man. of course, our, our content. Um, and, you know, we, we talk to a lot of agents who have used a presentation, for example, and they're using the presentation. They can't figure out why they're not getting sales. And to me, it, it kind of feels like many organizations, they'll hand you, hey, use this presentation. You're going to sell $8,000 a month. And they don't a week, yeah, or eight thousand dollars a week, and you're going to have a you know a lot of production. You're going to do great. They go out and they're repeating. They're repeating what they heard. A sales script, well, repeating you, a sales script, bingo. or you hear what you just reading, said there. reading a, a, a presentation. Use this presentation, and you will sell eight thousand dollars a week. Right. Like, yeah, that's such a different philosophy than who we are and how we teach, because 
we are using a presentation to educate the client, to help them realize the vulnerabilities and the value there, to help them put a plan in place to take care of their family. Yes. And the the results or the income based upon serving the families will always be there because of that. Like that's a big difference. Like right. our motivation is to be difference makers. I mean, Roger has it on his wrist right now. And like, you're not, it, it's not difference makers in the eyes of your bank account, right? <laughs> It's a difference maker. I made a difference in my bank account today. <laughs> Please save that, Adam. I want that for sure. I want that for sure. But that's the whole point. We hope you did. Yeah. yeah we, we really want hope you, to. you did. Yes. But we want you to have made a difference in their life first. As the first. result of serving As the result them. of serving someone else. Yes. That shouldn't be the primary motivation. Yes. We understand that it's a career. Yeah. We understand that you're in it to make money. But boy, you can come at this from a price position or you can come at it from a value position. If you come at it from a price position, you're always looking for the lowest price. So mm-hmm. you better have the lowest price carrier on the market. And guess what? Most people don't because there's always one other one that's $2 a month cheaper for 10000 Or there's one other one that's if you do this fully underwritten term plan on this mortgage protection policy versus going simplified issue, you're going to save that client $8 a month yep. or $15 a month. Yeah. And eight weeks later, when they still don't have their policy, you realize what they really wanted was coverage. <laughs> not yeah. to save eighteen dollars only if they get approved after eight weeks. Like, like there's there's got to be value in this proposition for them. There's got to be a, a win on the other side for them first before you can see that difference in your bank account. Yeah, and uh, Roger, you you hit on something there about. Um, you better have the lowest price product and then eight weeks. I think, you know, for some agents, they're like, what are you uh, talking about? You know? Yeah. Um, and, and I think we probably could give a little context to that uh, yeah. of those so, scenarios that you've run into or what you've seen. If you're running a, 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 a in a program like the one we, you know, we work in, we work in a, a, a in a primary markets of final expense, mortgage protection. We now, you know, run in uh, Medicare, arena, uh, in annuities, IULs, and things like that. But in the traditional um, mortgage markets or the final expense markets, they're oftentimes leads driven, right? So we're Correct. calling on new mm-hmm. people that we don't have an existing relationship with. So to, to them, we're someone they just met. So we don't have the credit of the trust of time in a relationship. We don't have that. Because we don't have that, if we don't sell on a value-based principle, right, first – the only other thing we can lead with is price. <laughs> the only thing we can lead with is price. And if you're leading with price, there's always one other carrier that's going to be a lower price. And one way you can get a lower price is by going with fully underwritten if you can get the guy qualified or if you can get the lady qualified. But now here's all the other stuff you don't know. What's in their health history? You have no clue. You're asking right. them basic mm-hmm. simplified questions. You're trying to jam through a policy to get the lowest price but the value to the client is getting covered for their need. And what you think is $12 is going to make a difference or $15 a month is going to make a difference. And and it may make a difference ultimately in the amount of coverage. If you can't get them qualified or if you can't get them qualified within a reasonable period of time, or when you get them qualified, it doesn't include the additional benefits of these riders that are available on simplified issue products, but you can get them qualified for in you know, 24 to 40 hours in most instances with a much lower underwriting threshold. You can get them qualified easier, but the price point is going to be a little higher. You have to say, what is the trade-off? What's the trade-off there? Am I always selling on price? And if you are, you're going to lose a lot of those cases because you can't get them covered. And so really, if your mission is to do what your client needs, which is to get covered, (laughs) and you've proposed something now that they can't get, now it's not a win for them. Now they feel like they're getting a consolation prize to have to pay more yeah. for something that they needed all along. And it's just because of how you approach it. You approach it from a price perspective rather than a value perspective. So fully underwritten versus simplified issue in that case for mortgage protection, it's so much easier when you're dealing with leads, not people you don't know, and not people you know, sorry, to uh, it's so much easier to go with a simplified program because you can actually do what the client wants and you can do it with a high level of certainty and provide them the service they need and build value, and it's not about the price. If you make it about the price, it's always going to be about the price. Can I protect my family? Um, Is it a quick process? Is it It, affordable? Is it affordable? For me and my budget. And are there other benefits attached to it? Are there other benefits associated? Great, great. Does it do what I need? Here's the question. 
Chris or Roger, either one, or any of you listeners, if you, if, if your mom was going to get a policy, would you want her to have the, the best price or the best plan? Not the best, best product. Plan. Yeah, the best Every plan. Time. For sure. it, Every it, time. And I think yeah. anybody you ask that to, and if you ask that so, to yourself in the car, you would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. And why are you selling on just the best price? And they may be thinking, well, well, guys, like, what, what do I need to do? How do I do that differently? This is all I know. Well, when you think about your sales process, this is the clients are trusting you as a person. Like you're the professional, you're the advisor, you're the ones with the answers that's building that relationship. And they're literally trusting you with bank account information, social security information, and to make one of the most important purchases they'll ever make to protecting their family or when they need it the the most from a death to pay for the house, to have living expenses for final expenses, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Why are we only presenting things as price? Why, if that's not what we would buy for our own mother, if that's not what we would buy for our own families, and if you look at the way we purchase anything in life, cars or anything, you're not going to just buy the cheapest car. Mm-hmm. You're going to buy the best value for your budget. And that's never just based upon the price tag. And really the way you do that is start learning the different products, learning why one is a better plan versus the other, non-related to money. If you looked at your entire carrier lineup and, you, and they were all exactly the same price, which one would you sell the client and why? And I promise you, if you speak that to your client and, and you, you have that conviction and you understand, you will, Mrs. Jones, if, if I were you or if you were my mother, 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 if you were my mother, this that's is a good one. That's, yeah, that's, that's in Boston. Miss Jones, if you was my mother, this is what I'd recommend. No. <laughs> I want you to meet my mother. Right, exactly, right? exactly. But this is what I this is what I'd he recommend. Was in the and, and why? You were in Boston Harbor. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Kentucky. He's up north. You know how that's right. That's, that's um, true. But this is why. Like that would go so much further with the client mm-hmm. and understand your conviction and your belief that's inside of you about that product. Right. And if you feel that's uncomfortable when it comes down to price, if you like, well, I don't want to learn all that. I don't want to go through that. What if you just simply stopped and asked your client, Ms. Jones, now there's a couple different options we have for you. Now I can show you basically anything you want and we're all going to, we're going to protect your family, but would you, you're looking for the best plan for your family or are you looking for the cheapest price? What do you think they're going to say? Best plan. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then at that moment, when you show them the different options, and if they don't know the difference, if they're not taught or educated on the difference between the plan, the only thing they can see is price. Of course, they're going to pick the lowest price. Mm. So it's up to you as the agent to be able to provide that value, understand it yourself, and then provide it to them. And it's really good to recommend what you would do for your family. They're trusting you in that process. Do each of you, do either of you, let me ask this question, do either of you drive the cheapest car that's made in the market? No. No, <laughs> an easy. I no. don't either. Right. And I think most of the listeners yeah. on this podcast would say the same. And yeah, I don't drive the cheapest car that's made. Ask yourself what the, what is the reason why you don't? There's one that's cheaper that can get you from point A to point B. It's everything. Why? Roger. Why Clothes, don't you drive the cheapest one? Shoes. Right. Why don't you drive the cheapest one? Well, because my Geo is one of the nicest cars that were made in 1987. That is true. That is true. The Metro <laughs> Geo. But there was Metro a Hyundai Geo. Pony that was cheaper. <laughs> That's true. If you had five thousand dollars if you had five thousand dollars and two hundred and fifty dollars for a down payment. I'm you gonna get, get a call this week. You I, could get I a drive three a Geo. cylinder Hyundai Pony. <laughs> a three cylinder. The Roger would have the three best cylinder. horse and buggy. <laughs> he would. Dude, it would be tricked. Right. So think about it. Like none <laughs> Dude, of us do this. None of us buy the cheapest shoes Absolutely. ever. Or you just wear like flip flops probably right. or something. Yeah. So we don't. We mm-hmm. buy on value and what it's gonna do for us. You need to start positioning your sales that way. Learn about how it meets the benefit and the need of the client. Mm-hmm. Uh, and how your benefit meets the need of the client. Yeah. Because internally is where their real question is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is my family going to be protected? If I have a heart attack, what happens? If I have get cancer like my sister did, is there any help for me on this policy? Well, if the cheap one that's fully underwritten is all stripped down and it doesn't, and this other one over here that's $25 more a month has all oh. the bells and whistles, and now the client, right. and if you were to put them in the predicament where they have cancer, which one do you want? Oh, I always want this one. Yeah. Well, position it that way. Right. Because, or you get a call later. Yeah, people are more likely to get cancer. They're more likely to have a heart attack. They're more likely to get stroke than just just, just die. Right. Yeah. So like, these are all things that, that play into that. Also, mm-hmm. how plans pay out, 
how quickly you know uh, they pay out. When I'm talking about paying out to the family, you know, yeah. up, on, up on death claims and things, there's so many other variables and factors. Value is way more important than price, at, always. At the end of the day, if you if you really think about it, which I haven't said that in about 50 episodes. At the end of the day, <laughs> it's time no, to bring it back. When you really think about it, <laughs> yeah, when you really think about it. But um, the, all they're receiving is a piece of paper and a promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a piece of paper and a promise, and they're not going to be here. And that promise, you may think it's what's written on the policy, but that's not necessarily true. I would say most of the clients don't actually get their policy in the mail and read it page for page. Every now and then you, you'll find one that does that. But that promise is coming from you and they're trusting you in that moment. If you're trying to speed sell over the phone in 10 minutes and just get an app, they're trusting the words that are coming out of your mouth and who you are as a person to be there to protect their family at the end of the day. So it's really worth it for you to position this promise and make sure you're truthful, honest, and you would do what you would do in your family to protect them because that piece of paper is going to be there, but they're hoping that promise is going to hold up, or at least their family or their beneficiary yeah, is going to be hope. backed up. With it, it's got to be. Paper. It's yeah. got to be. So. You know, there and there, there's uh, a kind of a, a triangle of understanding too. You you're talking about product mm-hmm. that it's important to understand your products and how it meets the needs, but but also the needs of your clients and the people that you're sitting with that you're able to hear or ask good questions for them to reveal Mm -hmm. what's at stake, what they're trying to accomplish, what their needs are, and not just jam them or pigeonhole them. And then the other part is you having an understanding. Don't skip over that, Chris. Okay, go ahead. That is is so well said, but it's so delicate. Jam them into something you're positioning. And like, you know, I've ridden, we've all ridden together. We all very similar in in our method of selling um, in ways. But you never have to jam anybody into anything. When you ask those questions, and it, they, they will tell you exactly what they need, who it's for, and why they want it. Yes. And like you should never have to ever jam anything to anybody or try to convince them of a certain policy or an amount. If you're doing that, you may be getting some apps, but that's not, you're, not, you're not reaching anywhere close to your potential. Right. Because mm-hmm. of that, exactly what you just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the, these are so tied together. The other is you're understanding your position and your role as a, a salesperson, a true salesperson who is helping people get what they want. That's it. Because if you have that mentality, like that salespeople are slimy, then when you're getting on the phone and you're making the call or you're knocking on the door, you're you're approaching them hoping not to be that person and you're not focused on their needs and what they're trying to accomplish. Mm. You're not focusing on what, what promise can be made to them. So it's kind of, it seems like there's this trifecta of understanding of you, your job, the people you're sitting with and the products that you're If you notice, no matter what industry you go into, salespeople are never called salespeople. They call them client care advocates, yeah. advisors, mm-hmm. you know, facilitators or coordinators. They're, they're never called salespeople. There's a reason. <laughs> There's a reason for it. There's yeah. a reason why they don't do it yeah. because nobody wants to be sold. Mm-hmm. Selling is based on no value and price. No value and price. And so the only thing you have is price. So live up to the, your name. If you're, if you're an insurance advisor, then be that. <laughs> be someone who advises on value and let them make a choice based on value and present value. Yeah. We're simply problem solvers. That's it. That's all we are. There's there's a problem out there that what happens if they pass away? What happens to their home? What happens to their family? What happens to their bills? What happens to their final expenses? We know that as a professional, this market has problems and we know the solution. The solution is these different insurance products that are provided by insurance carriers. And we know there's a problem. We know mm-hmm. there's a solution. Mm-hmm. All we do is we meet the two together. Now, we find that problem with a particular family. We know what the general problem is, but we need to find the specifics. Mm, And then we need to find the specific carrier that matches that exact problem. And all we are is providing solutions for their family of the problem that they particularly have with a carrier that matches the perfect solution for that particular problem. That's really all we do. We're connectors. We're just connectors and problem solvers. I think some of the people who do this the best are people who move beyond... You know, like uh, basic life insurance, when I say basic, I'm, which is the most essential, obviously, mm-hmm. obviously all life insurance is designed to have a death benefit. 
That's the purpose of it, right? So it can protect a family with a death benefit at the end. The extra bells and whistles that come with it is, you know, terminal illness riders or critical illness riders or chronic illness riders on some policies. Um, accelerated death benefit riders for, for, for certain things. Of course, some of the other reasons why life insurance is such a good vehicle or our life insurance license provides us a good vehicle is the ability to do annuities and help move people from, you know, variable funds in the stock market, mutual funds into a what's deemed a life insurance product, which is a fixed indexed annuity, right? You move your money in there. It's a safe place to put their money. I think those people really know how to ba- base, uh, uh, position value yeah. because they're talking about how to protect yourself from downside loss, right? And give yourself some upside gain and move your money over here. And it's positioned, the whole presentation is positioned on value. It's not positioned on price, it's positioned on value. Um, also like an IUL strategy for putting people into like a tax free retirement situation where they can access money from policy loans as that policy matures. And we've had guests on the, on the podcast who talked about those strategies. Again, those are positioned on value on how you can benefit later. Once there's cash value in the policy that you can take out and borrow against it, not have to pay it back because it's deemed as a loan and the policy will pay back the loan when you die. It still has a death benefit, but it has all these other value features on it. So I think people who are, are now into what we would call advanced market sales, IULs, annuities, and things like that, those people are more prone to speak value as, a, as opposed to price. I would agree. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so like, if you can kind of see that as a progression of really understanding the value of how products can work, the more value you can bring in your presentation, whether it's on the phone, over a Zoom, or face-to-face, the more value, the price becomes less important. It still has to be affordable, but the price of the product becomes less important. You still then position that, that package or that plan, like you said, Zach, that plan, you position that plan then with an affordable monthly premium. So you just adjust the plan amount up and down to make it affordable for the client. But the actual price of that particular product and company is not as relevant anymore because now you've done your job as an advisor. You've positioned value over price and uh, it's no longer about, you know, where there's no value, there's no price low enough. So, yeah, I think um, this is a a lot of food for thought for agents. I think this is a good podcast for you to definitely take some notes on and review and this is what I did after sets. I don't know if you guys did this. I mean, for me, there after a sit, I would evaluate it and determine you know, um, I mean, this is another podcast. What were the five reasons? If I didn't, if I didn't get a sale, I was evaluating which of the five reasons why I didn't get the that sale. They didn't buy. Yeah, why they didn't buy. Um, evaluating, uh, you know, the questions that I asked. Asking myself, uh, what are some better questions? And I'd practice those things while I was while I was driving around to my next my next mm-hmm. sit. And I think this is a good one for for all of, all of us. Like. Are we are we presenting value? Are we listening to our clients and meeting their needs? I think that's the important stuff. So that's your homework. I think that's good homework for, for the agents out there. I agree. Yep. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Uh, check out lifeinsuranceacademy.org. Uh, we have great resources there. I do want to highlight our, our presentation. It is a value-based presentation. Uh, it is designed for agents to uh, do exactly what we've talked about of um, – reaching the stakes of the client, helping them solve their problems, helping them verbalize their needs and Mm -hmm. us just coming alongside of them. Mm -hmm. So check it out at lifeinsuranceacademy.org and we'll catch you on the next Life Insurance Academy podcast. Thanks. 